to wall ball, ball above all, when the altar call calls, it's Riffic Nell Mark Chef, unsullied by a single sponsorship, not yet, outside the box, the next Ernie Shack, Charles Jet, every stack cross check, every last prospect, tear open a Spalding and reach for next topics, we the underdog, but we bopping like the tropics, here we settle calls and welcome controversy, it's ball above all. Ladies and gentlemen, first episode of Ball Overall. So we just want to say thank you for tuning in. Um, I'm the chef. That's my name. That's what I go by. We over here we have it's your boy Riff, Riffic the Ghoul. You can call me Riff. Over here, no, any uh, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's nice and simple, Chris. All right, exactly. So <laughs> ball above, yeah, above yeah. Ball. yeah, ball above all. Yeah. So again, thank you for tuning in, episode one. So basically, the way this is gonna run is we're gonna pull great topics out of this falling ball right here. You know, we love this game. So after we pull those topics out, we're gonna have 12 minutes on each session. And then from there, we're just gonna continue to kind of roll on. So we hope you enjoy, tune in. First person to go, I guess, would be me. So I'll pull the first topic out of the, out of the basketball. And let's see what we have. Okay, I think this is a good one. Where does Vince Carter rank with top Raptors or Raptors overall? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll let my buddy Chris kind of lead off with this. And Tough one. We'll start the timer now. Tough one. Does he get his jersey retired? Yeah, it's a, it's a very, very tough one. I think about overall his body of his career, he was a fantastic player, but during his time with the Raptors, it ended so poorly, it's hard to really see him in such a good light. I know a lot of the Raptors fans probably still hung over and recovering from it right now. So the overall body of work of Vince Carter is definitely Hall of Fame. But for me, the Raptors period, the first thing I think about in Vince Carter in, in, in a Raptors jersey would be his game seven shot in Philadelphia. <laughs> <laughs> Flew to North Carolina. Oh, God. To accept uh, his, his education, and you know, that kind of just signifies his whole time with the Raptors. So, for me, maybe fourth or fifth all time Raptors. Wow. Okay. Say. Okay. All right. Yeah. No. Um, man, that's a that's a this is tough for me. Loaded. Because, yeah. You know, that was an age for me when I'm just starting to watch basketball. Raptors game, not um, a lot of those other games are televised in Canada and stuff. Raptors games are the main games that are on TV. So like this is like, this is someone that I, I really looked up to, you know. Might have been the only basketball player I was watching at the time. Um, at the at the end, man, at the end, like you said, it was it was just tough to see him go like that, you know. Like, um, I wish that I wish that it was more of a you know, a better ending. Um, but I feel like I feel like I shouldn't be emotional about that stuff. You should. <laughs> I feel like I shouldn't be emotional about that stuff and not, but you know, not make that be the deciding factor on on where he ranks. But um, I'm not gonna lie, man. Like, I'm not gonna lie, man. I f even if even if I take that out, I still think that. There's been more successful Raptors than him outside of that. So, mm -hmm. um, he's either three or four. I think he's either three, and that's outside of me being emotional about how he <laughs> left. Mm -hmm. All right, Riff. Yeah, so here. yeah. So here's what I'll say uh, to both Nell and Chris's points. It's a very bittersweet relationship we have. This, you know, Vince tugs on the heartstrings. He had us, you know. And if you if you were in the city at the time, you know, you, you mentioned you were young. Vince was heavily like on the downtown scene too. So he became like a off the court type of personality for the city as well. So there's a lot of love for him there. But I digress. Vince wasn't at his best, or he didn't play his best ball as a Raptor. So that's a strike against him for me. Because when he went to New Jersey, he went bonkers. Mm -hmm. Not to mention the game winning like, you know. <laughs> you know what I mean? The man folded his arms out on his so, <laughs> these so are that was that crazy. I, you know, yeah. now, now in a Raptor uniform, you have the you have the dunk off, epic. Yeah. Um, you know, 
there's a That's lot of it. things. So long story short, um, Vince was the most electric. He was the most like, uh, he, he, he garnered the most attention and the most fanship and all that type of stuff. He did a lot for the city, but in terms of accomplishments, um, the emotional attachment to the, to the Raptors and stuff, I'm gonna put him probably third, I would say. Uh, you know, I gotta give honorable mention to DeMar. And you know, it's arguable for me if Larry's the best Raptor all time, but I may have to give it to him because he, he came up from the trenches with us to a championship as our point guard, as our as our heart and our and our and our kind of a here's, here's what I'm gonna get you, man. Yeah. You're putting him over Bosch. Who Vince? Yeah. That's why I'm I putting have... Vince over Bosch. Oh wow. Yeah, so, yeah. No, no, yo, Bosch was a 2010 guy in Toronto. Oh, wow. I don't want to erase but that. It's not just 2010, man. Like, what else was it? Was, was multiple playoff appearances. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Leading, for sure. Leading and, points, and, for sure. And just, wh just why I hit fourth or fifth for me as well is. I see Freddie as someone who's going to rise probably above him quite easily as well. It can't be too premature with <laughs> well, I'm getting a little premature. I hear what you're saying. But, but, uh, I hear what you're saying. You just set the record. The, the man just set a record. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah. yeah. I think did, in five years we're going to be talking about Freddie in that top two. So, so let me give my quick spin. And he's loyal. Yeah, yeah. Let me give my quick spin. And I'm going to take a completely different approach than you guys. And you guys know me personally. Maybe the people don't know. I'm not a Raptors fan. That's number one. And I said it. So at the end of the day, the way I look at it, I put Vince number one for me overall, and I'll tell you why. I heard everything you guys said, credit to it, but at the end of the day, I guess we would have to go back and look at the numbers. Obviously, DeMar and Kyle Lowry, et cetera, are gonna beat him points-wise because they've been here longer. So to me, the way I look at it is I look at impact to a franchise, and I say <clears throat> Vince coming here during the time that he was here when I was a fan, he, elect, like you said, you made some good points there. He took the city to another level in terms yeah. of the actual game itself. I don't think we can ever duplicate that again. So anybody coming after him is just somebody that is basically following his footsteps, trying to level it up because time changes, things evolve, that's the way it goes. Kobe said in his documentary, you know, RIP to the late great, Kobe said in his documentary, do not, do not compare me to Jordan because I'm a product of that. How can I be better than the product of something that I studied and learned Kobe from? Said that? He said it came Whoa. out of his mouth. Yeah, Do not compare me wow. to that. So I take that standpoint as I believe Vince did something here that we can never take back. Okay, granted, the ending part of it, but if you actually go back and watch the documentary, he talked about the fact that we're talking on a business standpoint, the Raptors started to, to go a different direction. They started because he was always hurt. They started saying, you know what, we're gonna put we're gonna go more of the Bosch direction. And he said these little things that he would look at, he started to realize, you know what? Okay, maybe he took the, the, the crappy way out and he started to stop playing and he stopped dunking and stuff like that. But that's at the end of the day, it, though. That's what, at the end of the day, what, what he did, it. you still stop can't dunking. take it away, but that's just my opinion. But no, 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 your opinion is so valid. And I think that the fact that you're coming from a non-Raptor fan standpoint is huge as well. Because are, are we all Raptor fans here? Yeah, I'm yeah. a Raptor fan. I think the bigger, another point I think to add to support that is you know, you look at the Vince Carter effect, which I'm sure which yeah, you guys oh, yeah. have watched. And yeah, all yeah. Which I don't fully buy a lot of it. There's a lot of it on my gap. But yes. the main theme of that is all the Toronto-based players who are coming up now grew up loving basketball because of Vince in the early sure, 90s. That's, 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 that's fact. That's fact. That's fact. So we, that's we wouldn't look at any... Too. So, we, so we the question is to you guys then, what do you equate to be the to be the greatest of a franchise? Well, what, what do you look so at? The question first is what did Vince... Like where does he rank? That's what the question is. What did Vince actually do for... It's hard to ask this after everything we just said, but what did he do for the team? Like, playoff runs, mm -hmm. um, you know, he had some game winners for sure. What was the regular season like? Like, so when you compare him to Bosch, Larry, all these guys, Bosch, pro like, like you said, Bosch probably did more for our team on the court than Vince. On the court. Culturally is where his impact is. Right, I'm that's like an Iverson. I'm telling you guys, if you, if you really, like this year is an odd year for the Raptors. We've been winning for a while now. Man. Yeah, we're not used to this mediocrity anymore. It's, yes, it's man. Very we've been, since Bosch days, Garbajosa, Bargnani, TJ Ford. We've been winning for a while, man. We didn't say the Vince days though. But but but, but then you got but then you gotta dive deeper to what were those rosters? That's what I look at. They were always trash. Even Vince so, had a so, trash so, roster. So Vince was still taking those teams to the level he was. 
That's what I look at. You know I, what I, mean? I, I won't disagree. Yeah. You had Steph Curry's dad playing back then. Exactly. I won't disagree. <laughs> I will not disagree with that, man. It's tough. It's if tough, we, man. if we, I'm sure, if I take a check and look to see who was sustaining a winning record season after season after season. Even though I'm emotional about Vince, there's a few other guys that have done that, man. I guarantee in 2010s, Kyle Laurie is top 10 winningest players in the 2010s. Man. Probably, Kyle, Laurie yeah. is, Kyle Laurie is a winner, man. Like, Yo, we're number one in the last, I think, eight years, years, our winning percentage. Five yeah. years or something. Yeah, yeah. Five, yeah. It's the five best years. in the NBA. Yes, right. Regular so, season record, you know, I think yes. it was. So, yeah. You know, uh, as though as a Raptor fan, as a, you know, Vince was iconic and stuff, like, I definitely, That's the I, word. Take, I take, I take, yeah. I take stats and all that stuff into account. So it's not, it's not even me just, you know, and the, the, t- the real debate is <laughs> if Kawhi is above him. No, I don't even. I don't even. That's another that's conversation. Real conversation. It is another yeah, conversation, but it's not like, much of a conversation. You you know, I'm not going to give it to him one year. I'm not. Play not. Right, I'm right, sorry, right. Championship or not? I ran a cop situation. I agree. I agree with that. I can't play one year. I strongly believe, like I said, like when we look at impact, Kawhi definitely has impact, but you can't even bring him up into the conversation. I don't think so. You know, but I think, like you said, even Bosch gets overlooked a lot. He does as a rapper. People don't even talk about Bosch. Yeah, 2010. <laughs> 20 and 10. Oh, the teams were pretty for average here like, most of his time when he was here, right? That's true. Bonyani was his, one of his sidekicks. That's, so, that's yeah. true. But man, we were we were still one of the top five teams yeah. in the East. Yeah, we're going yeah. to playoffs every year. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Winning first, the series here. Second yeah. round, first yeah. round, whatever, you know? So. So ultimately, you guys are basically saying you're going to. We're saying he's yes. not number one. Not he's number not one. Number one. Not number saying, one. So, so we'll just leave it at that. And then we'll move on to the next. I, I'm gonna put him where I put him, but we'll no, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> that type of you uh, <laughs> need that type of perspective. Right, 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 right. So, Riffic, the next question's on. Oh yeah, I get to dig into Spaldy. <laughs> All right. Good first question. Yep. J- is James Harden overrated? Ooh, hey! mm. Let's Ooh. go. You start that off, Chris. Oh. Yes, sir. Wow, that is a deep <laughs> question. Ooh, that's tough, man. James Harden. It's not even that tough. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> MVP, what, four or five times scoring champ? One of the greatest scorers of all time, I would say. That I've seen many comparisons comparing him to Jordan. But I think, it, yeah, it, it's, it's all, for me, it's always measured with championships. And clearly everywhere he's gone so far, I haven't seen any of that winning culture. A lot of the media coming out of Houston was playing up to his, you know, his standards of how he wanted to play and how he wanted to play off the court as well was, but he did, the results are on the court individually, but overall, yeah, for me, at this stage, I, I, I'm going to call him overrated. Ah! I'm going I'm I'm to call, okay. call him overrated. You have to like yes. talk yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're building it up. Yeah, I, yeah. I had to think you about have to it. Have to convince it. Yourself. I, had to think, I had to think about it for a while, but the man is going to the Hall of Fame. Let's just make that very clear. So yeah. Yeah. But he. Hall of Fame? This is very. This is going to be hotly debated. I know right. that. I'm That's a different debate. Is he worthy of the Hall of Fame? That's a whole different debate. There is a little bit of overratedness in there, but overall. He's a fantastic player. Will be first ballot Hall of Fame without a doubt. So this is so me. I'm a guy that went to a high school that didn't have very many basketball players on his team. You know, every single night, it's it's dependent on me to perform in order for us just to compete. Mm-hmm. We can talk about winning afterwards, but I have to score 30 just for us to be in the game. So you know, I can't I can't say that Harden is overrated with the rosters that he's had. He's had some good sidekicks or, or you know, um, second options or things like that, but Harden has never had like a championship run roster where he's been the, the focal point of the offense, to me personally. So even the time that, mm-hmm. even the time that he may have had a chance with the Chris Paul, then Chris Paul got hurt. So, you know, um, I don't. I don't think he's overrated at all. Man. I don't think he's overrated at all. Is there flaws in his game, or can we, you know, can we debate certain things about his his uh, the way that he plays? Yes, Defense. of course. Yes, we can. Yeah. We can debate those things. But overrated? No. Like this is this is one of the best 
talents in basketball in, in this day and age, for sure. Rip. All right, yeah. I'm gonna start my statement. Is, is Bernard King in the Hall of Fame? Real question, Bernard King. I have to look that up. I would have to look that up. We have to, we have to uh, I'm pretty sure he is. Let's I think he is. Let's get uh, a phone like, uh, so we can look I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure he is. Bernard King? Yeah. Okay, let, be, crazy okay I won't even touch on Bernard because there's a comparison I want to make. But, um, Chris, I want to pick yours, up, yours apart up for a second because yeah. you said... You <laughs> said you took me a little while to get to it. took me a little while to get to it. No, but I'm just saying, you said you... As of right now. He is, he is. Yeah, Bernard King. September 8th, 2013. Okay, okay. So then I have to just shut that part of my argument down. But you said that you gauge, you know, championships are yeah, a huge man. thing. And in the same breath said he's a first ballot Hall of Famer. As of right now. But that's your body, that's your individual body of work. For me, for, for, for me to get into the Hall of Fame here, there's a lot of good players who have never won. Who exactly, and I still have my, my little squabbles with that. Um, but anyways, uh, I'll leave that alone for now. I'm sure we'll get into that later on, championships and what they mean and stuff. But is James Harden overrated? I'm gonna start by saying for a long time, he was underrated. Which, which to me was crazy. When he was on OKC, he wasn't like, you didn't speak his name that much. He was very underrated for a while. And even in well, Houston, man. it took him a year or maybe two to become the guy he is. Harden to me is not overrated at all because he has revolutionized scoring the basketball. Once you've revolutionized the game or transcended it in some way, you're known forever. I think Harden will ever be known in the in, in the conversation of basketball 20, 30, 40, 50 years from now because of how he's changed what it is to score. Like he has made it he has made it so that we don't care about traveling anymore. Like he travels not, quite a bit. And not passing the ball? I, um he, he passes the ball. He he leads, No, I know. You know, he leads he's he leads a league in assists currently. Actually. I know he's at 10, 10 a game, so at least because you know he's dropping 14s here 12s there but but what i'm saying is i think harden revolutionized the game uh, and that coupled with the fact that he went underrated for a long time i think he's now at a level where he deserves all the accolades and and all that stuff but with that said you know being so high you're gonna get picked apart we all know the flaws in his game um and yeah but he's not he's not overrated but if we're gonna talk about his flaws that might take away from his whole thing but he, he's not overrated so, I'm just going to start it off by saying he's overrated. <laughs> In my opinion, I'm just going to set it there and then I'm going to break my case down. The reason why I say he's overrated, uh, Nell, you said that he hasn't had rosters. I think that's yeah. complete nonsense. Yeah. He's had CP3, yeah. he had Jeremy Lin, he had Dwight <laughs> Howard, he had Russell Westbrook, he had Victor Oladipo. I mean, why did we you say Jeremy Lin? Can... You're discrediting him. At the time that Jeremy Lin went there, he was still oh. a big time player. And, I, and at the end of the day, I'm saying. This guy cannot play with another type of all-star. I mean, obviously he's on Brooklyn now, so we're gonna see what is he gonna do with Kyrie and KD come playoff time because I feel like what it is is we get caught up in the, the regular season basketball. Regular season basketball, the product that's on the floor now is catered to offense. So you're right in what you said, Riffic, in regards to the refing, like, I mean, sorry, the, the revolutionizing, revolutionizing the game in terms of how he plays. But I look at how the, the game is ref. The game is ref for scoring. So it's like, of course he's going to look good. He understands the rule book, like, to the T. Like, that guy understands, if I put my arms out for a certain extension, I'll get a certain call. If I attack a certain way, put my elbow out, I'll get a certain call. But would this have worked, like, in another time? I don't, I don't know. Like, to me, I just feel like he... he he understands the game, and don't get me wrong, I'm not going to take away the fact that the guy is good. Don't get me wrong, the guy is good. But I just don't, I just don't, I think he's overrated. I think we're going to really see who he is come playoff time. That's what I say. I'll put it like that. Playoff time is where basketball starts, and we will see if he's at the level that you guys are saying. No, but we know he's not come playoff time. He's known to flake and fall apart. What I'm saying is... Because the refing is different. That's he, what I'm saying. But he's not overrated because, okay, to be overrated, it means that... You're getting ratings in areas you don't deserve it. We don't ever praise him when he... We say he has shitty defense. We say he sucks in the playoffs. But we give him the maximum ratings where he deserves it, which is offensively. You know what I'm saying? Like, True. That's the only place we rate him ever. True. True. I don't think that's an overrating. We don't ever rate him on his play... We, we say it. We, everyone knows he's falling apart in the playoffs and he doesn't play deep. True. That's not what we're rating him on. So if we're going to look at overrating being like, okay, what is his overall game? And break that down... Even still, I don't think he's overrated. But 
let's I, I think we lose context when we talk about being overrated or not. It's just about how are, how is the basketball world rating you right that, now? That's a good and question. Is, are you worthy of it? That's I want question. you to tell me one roster that's won a championship that Harden's had a better roster than. What do you mean? There's not a single championship roster that Harden has had a better roster than. But Harden's had competitive rosters. He, he's That's, never had a it's championship ridiculous to say roster. that he hasn't. He's it's never had a championship when he had roster. Out. What about a championship when he had roster out? isn't it? You have to win a it's championship ridiculous. roster first. You're the best player on the team. If you never have to had guide it. your team. Do you know what that is like? He's never had. He said, a "Do I know what it's like?" I think you know I know what it's like. He's but I've never had it, a know? championship roster, bro. He, he's never had no, a championship. Okay, roster. Hold your star accountable. That's what I say. What? Where? What? How? Okay. And I'll let you. I'll let you answer this. How do you hold him accountable to the rosters that he had? And he's had another. Oh, I just named you three, five. What about? He's Dwight had Howard? other superstars on his team. Is that Dwight Howard? How come he couldn't get it done? Yes, or no, he had. Even a better. No, that like I, all yeah. I'm saying is, all I'm saying is, if we really look at these championship rosters, it's eight, nine, ten guys that are gonna come out on the floor and produce in different ways. Unfortunately, I cannot say that he's had a championship roster. There's lulls when certain guys are on the floor. There was even when he had Chris Paul and Clint Capella, it was like when they came off the floor. I forgot what their plus or minus was. They went to like negative 100 or something if those three guys are off Because of him? Yeah. But, like, but, come on, man. He, he's never had a good enough team to win a championship. But let me so ask you. Sorry, but let me ask, this, <laughs> but let, let me ask you guys this question, though. And I'm going to pose this question. Is the offense predicated around the way he plays? And that's yes. why when your guy comes off the floor, the rest of your guys can't do anything. The plus minus is going to be bad, to your point, because the offense is predicated around one person dominating the ball. That's what happens. So answer me, what are you going to do if the offense is around this guy pounding the ball for 15 seconds and giving you the ball to spot up and shoot? So when he's off the floor, nobody knows what to do. Just, I, I'm trying to figure that out. That's what I'm saying. I mean, we can get into coaching and all that stuff. Too. Right. Yeah, we can. But. And that's why the main question to Nell's point is, what's the, who is responsible for these bad rosters? Management? Or him, or, or the I way. think it takes the, the the star player and the the franchise. Because if, yeah. if you tell me the fra the star player doesn't have like any LeBron. weight, LeBron's the greatest GM of all time. Thank right. you. No, right. Right. I'm right. glad you said that. Yeah, but you can't he's, he can't be compared. You can't compare anyone to LeBron. He's a unique. But we situation. gotta be. But we gotta be honest though. Yeah. You think, you think LeBron never looked at those rosters and realized that he's not gonna win a championship unless something changes? But where's the disconnect between the management and Harden? Is it that? Harden is saying, yo, you guys aren't getting me nothing. I, I don't want this. Or is management saying, yo, we're having a hard time getting people because of you. Like, wh that, like That's a good question. That's a good was, question. The team was always based around the D'Antoni system that they had in Houston, to your point. It was all about dribble, 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 heavy. No and, D. And no D. And then 43 is a game. It'd be a playoff Harden. And, and I know we're, Harden we're, doesn't get his shot. It's someone else. And I know we're going another direction. Three. But I wanted to say, isn't it the same thing with Luca kind of right now? Luca, yeah. Luca's. It is, it is. Luca's good point. The, Luca is the, the, the hand. The ball Maestro. Hand good point. Right? Good point. So if he comes off the floor, the offense is completely different. And I'm, that's what I keep asking you. Like, I don't. Man, you, so all you that can't get multiple. I'm sorry, man. You can't get multiple 50 point triple doubles and be overrated. The guy, he's not yeah, overrated. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He's, 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 he's not elite. overrated. From the time you're elite, there's no way to we're not, overrate. We're not talking you're about. Elite. We're not talking about normal, like normal yeah, performances elite, here. Even yeah, on Brooklyn, elite. he might be the third option, maybe by choice. By and choice. he's still getting triple doubles. I don't. I, he's not overrated, man. He's definitely not. I, I again, I look at, I look at so much to call someone rated everyone or overrated. Has, everyone and, has weak points in their game. You can't tell me you can put other guys in that hardened position with those rosters and they're going to win championships. Even LeBron on any of those Houston teams can't win a can't win a championship. But my, but my, but my, sorry, but my point my you. point is could LeBron have played with CP3, Jeremy Lin, Dwight Howard, yes, Westbrook? Yes, oh, yes. I think so. Yes. That LeBron that's my argument. Yeah, yeah. This guy doesn't play the way LeBron plays. So you can't like if you want to dive into that, now we're diving to way more analytics like LeBron could run with these guys and I promise you they would have a far maybe they wouldn't win to your point. But they would go farther in the playoffs than they would with him because his game doesn't predicate around yeah, it. That's probably true. That's probably true. Yeah. But LeBron wouldn't have more rings if he was on Houston this whole time. Okay, sorry, that's man. fair. That's fair. Sorry, I can man. I can give you that. I can rock with you on that. Sorry, that's man. true. This is coming from a guy that had to do these kinds of things. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. He had to do these kinds of you. things. So I so I feel for him. Although I feel like a lot of people are gonna say that now because of the way that things ended. 
in Houston too on a certain Vince Carter well, type thing. Yeah, the way he come out and ended it was yeah, yeah. Was bad. That's fan fair. The like, fans do that. Yeah, you know? kind of tough. Anyway, as well. that was time. So now it's on you for the next one. Right, all right, all right. Does isolation basketball kill the game? Ooh! I like that question. It's tough. It's a tough okay, one. Chris, you go. Start it off. Well, it's kind of funny that this goes after the James Hart like the, the <laughs> right Hart after you yeah, exactly. Right, because I think it has definitely changed the game. I think for me, looking at basketball overall, a lot of the you know, as a basketball player growing up, you, you look at players and how they play and you model your game after them with the with the NBA being so isolated, all you see is James Harden or Curry or Kyrie and these guys just dribbling the ball around. And it's pure isolation, right? People don't understand the fundamentals of the game as much growing up. So I think it is a shift. That's, you look at 90s basketball to what we have now, it's completely changed. So is it bad? Possibly, but it's the evolution of the game as well. You see more of every one size player fits all, kind of every position you see they're going to positionless across the court. So it's more of a evolution of the game versus a, a bad thing. But overall, I would say it is a bad thing because fundamentally the game is changing towards more of a negative situation and the fundamentals for me are lost a little bit. Yeah. So for me, man, I have um, kind of, I, I definitely need to pick a side, but I feel like I'm kind of on the fence. So as far as it being bad basketball i'm not gonna say it's bad basketball and the reason why i'm gonna the reason why i say that is there's certain times where if you have a player that is capable of getting in the lane at will then it's completely understandable why you would continue to isolate yeah. that particular player here's where i'm on the fence is depending on how that player you put too much i'm not gonna say it's pressure but you, you give him too much of the team's decisions because now if he passes you have opportunities to win if he's always shooting over two three people then you're making it tough to win so i don't know if it's i don't i'm not gonna say it's bad basketball but i also don't know if it's winning basketball so is it killing the game it really depends on who's doing it it really depends on who's doing it because certain guys when they do it can win the game for you, but then when other guys do it, can kill the game for you. So, man, it really just depends on on who's doing it. To be completely honest, that's that's pretty much my opinion on on the whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, kind of to piggyback off Chris, I'll say uh, it it kills the game if you are a traditionalist in how you look at basketball. It kills the game if you if you're one of those purists that are trying to retain what basketball once was, which we all know has changed. It's evolved, it's turned into something completely different. If now, if you are somebody, a new generation, or, or even maybe somebody who watched ball back in the day, but you can appreciate how it's being played now, if you're in that category, then ISO ball is what it's about. Like The game as it is now is just what it is. It's changing. And the problem is why the narrative is, oh, this is killing the game or that's killing the game. The problem is that people don't want the game to change. You know, you got a group of people that are all about the, the game changing, and then you have a lot of people who are a huge part of the basketball world that don't want the game to change. So they look at all these new things, the James Harden step backs and all these things, the Steph Curry is like, they're like, these guys are just play plays. So it's about perspective. If you love the game how it was, it's killed the game. If you like the game how it is now, that's what it's all about. I, you know, I think like Darno said, or Nell said, I, I feel like we, I'm on the fence too because I feel like being somebody that used to play the game the way I used to play it at the level I used to play it like I I, I strongly understand why you ISO certain guys mm -hmm. and I get that but then when you dive into it today's product that's on the floor is losing a lot of ratings like because it's more offense is there more people and this is a question maybe you guys everybody can answer are there more fans that watch the game because of the scoring and the way it looks? Or are there more of us that are purists that understand the game, played the game, and love the game for the defensive part of it and the offensive part of it? So then, my, the reason why I'm saying that is then it, 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 it would pose the question as, 
does it matter that there's not defense? Because it's about making money. It's about understanding that the product that's on the floor is scoring. So it's like, if that's the product, then isolation makes sense for what you're doing as a business. If we're looking at the purest, like us who love the game, defense does matter to us. So it's like, isolation is killing that all the time. So I'm on the fence, I don't know, okay, I, so, that's the thing. All right, let me say this, let me throw this out there. And I'm gonna say this, I think it works. Isolation ball can work for everybody. And I'll tell you why. Why does Patrick Beverly have a reputation or even have fans? In the league, mm -hmm. Help, just because he plays defense. Okay, defense. Now yeah. I feel that with it being such an offensive game, defensive players have a chance to shine too. That's if true. defense is your thing, and that's what you do, you have a chance to shine in an offensive league if you're stopping all these guys. That's true. Or if you're building your name on defense. So I think it can work for everybody. But like I said, there's some sour guy. I don't want to say sour, but there's some. Um, there, there are minds in basketball right now that just don't feel the game should change or needs to change because it's just such a good game as it was. But then you have um, the evolution of the game, the new generation style of, of ball. And I hate to use generational as the, as the separator or as the divider, but it is about the generations. Mm -hmm. right? it is, yeah. And because we're in this generation right now, currently as we stand, basketball is how it is, and it's iso ball. It's offensively, uh, it's offensive, and... It's just about entertainment value, in my opinion. But that doesn't mean that guys that care about defense and predicate their game on defense can't shine. That's true. That's that's the that's the silver lining behind it. If you really focus on what you do, even the role players right now can shine. Role players get a lot of shine. People no, like Montrez. Corner, though. But but okay. Yeah, out the corner, I don't know though, why so for some reason people talk so much about Montrez <laughs> yeah, and all yeah, these yeah. other guys. I don't even fully understand why, but I kind of do. It's because in an offensively geared league. They can stand out because if they play their role, which isn't offensive, and they do it well, all of a sudden it's like, oh shoot, he just helped us win the game too, doing what he does. Yeah, but that's yeah, true. Let me ask you, I think it comes back down to a lot around the product. For me, we, do you guys like watching, when Harden was at the Rockets, did you enjoy watching the Rockets play? I I'm going to say I no. I, 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 I enjoyed answer. watching Harden do what he did. <laughs> I, mean, I would switch it off pretty much for Rocket games. Right? Yeah, yeah, I agree. Man, I'm being completely honest. <laughs> it's... It's, it's not it's it's not completely winning basketball yeah. and it's not man it's about what you're watching for are you watching to be entertained and watch Harden get 40 or 50 or are you watching to watch good basketball and that, and that's why i said what i said so are we the the smaller end of the scale in terms of yeah people that are watching the product are we the 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 lower end where there's more consumers that want to see the yes. high ended Score a lot. It's become that way. crazy step back threes that Steph Curry does. Like, is that what it's about? You it's know what I mean? That. It's what are the kids that. growing up now doing? They're doing everything that the, the everything isolated. I would say, right? Nobody's doing yeah. what Tim Duncan did. Yeah, no, not, no one's catching in the block and no. shooting. No one's shoot. using the glass. Yeah, no, no. one's using the glass. Yeah. So you're using yeah. fundamentals. Even, even, even if you go on Instagram and, and you know, yeah. I Chris, all you guys, I send you guys different clips. It's all like one-on-one -on -one yeah. drills like and these guys are practicing yeah, breaking out yeah, that's, break it. Yeah, that's yeah. it you know let's be clear about something though the Kyrie's and the Dame Lillard's and all these guys of the world their fundamentals are on point yeah on point definitely so let's not say that isolation ball just takes away from the no. fundamentals I don't want to really get there because uh, Kyrie Irving they're are they're saying is arguably the most skilled player the NBA has ever 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 seen I agree with that though but it, it's and it's, people it's see him and think it's street ball. It's yeah. tough to win like that. I agree. That's I why agree. the Rockets. That's, that's, that's all I'm gonna I say. Agree. Yeah, but the game of basketball, they, unfortunately, like, you could do it if you want to do it. I mean, but when it come when when playoff time comes, the game slowed down. We're going possession for possession. The defense is set. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Just like, it's tough to win. And I, and I was it's actually to win. I, was, take, I don't I don't remember what I was watching, but to your point, like they said, when a team actually has the opportunity now to scout you for seven games. It's different. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Seven games, they can now look at your percentage from the 45, from the, the, the middle, and they go, listen, every time that Chris gets the ball in the 45, we're going to stop that. Yeah. So now it's like you said, how do you, that ISO ball is just not going to work. But everyone on your team is so used to, to, to playing that way. Yeah. Now all of a sudden you expose other guys, not to mention monetarily, you're screwing them for their future because they're like all season long. <laughs> I was hitting this at a 45% clip, and now during the playoffs, I'm hitting 20%. But that's because the defense is stopping me from doing that, you know? So that's, that's why people don't even understand how much of a genius Phil Jackson is. The, the triangle and those set plays 
their their actions, their motions. It's just yes, to get the motions. defense moving. That's Move that's the, the main reason. They had guys at ISO too, Jordan, ISO, Kobe, ISO, all that stuff, Kareem, whatever, but there was an action first. So now you have to play honest. You can't just stand and help while someone's ISOing. Your man is moving too. So yeah. Man, I don't know, man. It, there's a lot of that goes into it. A lot of coaching. If your team's giving you the green light, I can't say if I can't say if a team gives me, lets me do it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you, know, like, <laughs> you know, you know what? It get, might out be. Way, get out of yeah. the way. Get out of the way. Every time, I'm never, yeah, exactly. never going to do it too. So. Yeah. You know, with the episode, with the exception of maybe LeBron, the reality is the best players in the league, all the ambassadors in the league, the faces of the league are all yeah. ISO guys. It's true. So what are you going to yeah. do? Go no. against that? So yeah. this, this is what I'm saying too. Like so. LeBron does it, but LeBron is reading the game. Yeah. That's what LeBron, I'm saying. He's the LeBron exception. Never shooting over two people. He's the only and star right now. That's that really going to give you opportunities to win. Yeah. LeBron is is pretty much going to be the exception of almost everything we talked about tonight. Uh, it's sad to say, but you know. This is why people say he's the goat because he does. Oh, anyway, but that's another conversation. <laughs> uh, being an exception don't make you. No well, go, Chris. Chris, Chris yeah, you're, right, you're right, next on right, the ball. Right, you're right, next. Right, here we go. You're next on the rock. Sometimes it makes you a pony. I'll come to you. Okay. Yeah. Where do we rank Barkley in history? Why is he why is he always disrespected? Yes, let's Ooh, talk about that. Start off. Uh, great question. All right. Yeah, really good one. All right. Okay. So I'll start it off. I uh I I, I believe that Barkley's still gotta be in your top twenty list of greatest players of all the time. <laughs> And the reason the reason why I say that is if you break down again Ooh, deeply into 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 what Barkley did on bad teams, you know, mm. we're talking about Barkley having to check like take these teams by himself to the playoffs. And yes, he was out of shape. Yes, you could talk about the fact that maybe he didn't work out. Was that a big thing back then? Possibly not. But at the end of the day, the numbers don't lie. Okay, people are gonna beat him now over the time and the way the game has changed in terms of the time that he played. And not to mention the guy he was playing against, in my opinion, is the best player. And look at me, Michael <laughs> Jordan is the greatest player of all time. So he was playing against that guy. How were you gonna win during that time? At the, at the end of the day, I think he gets disrespected because he speaks his mind. Yeah. Barkley is, and Tristan was saying, or Riff, Riffick was saying this earlier, like you, 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 you look at the older guys of the game and the commentators of today and the desks like this, and these guys played the game and they played at a high level. They're all stars, superstars, and they just can't buy into the way the game has changed. But they're not looking at it from a monetary value and a point of where people are making money. So the game is changing because it's about where are we gonna, what are we gonna do to sell more tickets and get more people into the actual seats. So guys like Barkley are never gonna understand where guys are not playing defense, ISO basketball, mm -hmm. the James Hardens of the world. Like they're just not gonna get it and they never will. But I think Barkley just talks things that are real. If we really break down to the way the game was back then versus the way it is now, would some of these guys have lasted in the back day game? I, or the numbers, would they have been that great? There's a small percentage in my opinion, I think. I think people just disrespect, and he's country, <laughs> let's face it, he's yeah. from Alabama, he talks with a country accent, it's just disrespect off of that, but that's just my opinion. Riff, I give it to you. Yeah, um, what was the question again? Where does he rank? And where why do, where do we rank Barkley in history and why is he always history. disrespected? Okay, um, I don't know why he's always disrespected, I don't think he should be disrespected. Uh, I think he sucks as an analyst. <laughs> I think I, I hate hearing him talk. The, the, I, the key is whatever Barkley predicts, go the opposite. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the opposite. I think you know, go the opposite. He's, he's, he's up there for his personality to Delani's point. He yeah. had a, he was very outspoken when he played, but I think he's nothing like when I hear him talk now, I don't hear the Charles Barkley that I that I heard back in the day who yeah. used to cuss off refs and I hear a guy who's almost senile. Like I don't yeah. know. Anyways, but where does Barkley rank to me? Like, I have a hard time putting him in the rare air. Like, if there's a upper echelon, I don't think he's in it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I think he was, like, if if Jordan's a superstar, I don't. I think Barkley's an all-star. I can't put Barkley in the same category as the greats. Mm -hmm. But but was he, was he exceptional? Was he an undersized guy that did damage? And did he make his presence felt? Did he build a reputation for himself in the league? Yes, yes, yes. Did he get an MVP? Yes. Did he have good playoff performances? Yes, he was a good player, borderline great. But if we're gonna say guys like Jordan, Elijah, and all these guys are great, 
I have a hard time putting Barkley on their level. So for that reason, by default, he's not great to me. He, mm. He's just a very good player. Um, you know, if he goes down in the Hall of Fame, I always want to understand why more. Because right now, I don't fully understand what it is about his career that got him in the Hall of Fame. I would love to discuss that maybe when, on a later date. Is he Hall of Fame worthy? I'm still, I don't know about that. You know what I'm saying? That's just where I stand. He's good. He has a place in the history of the game. So, what, do we put a number on it or something? Like, no, you don't have to. I, I just threw one out there, like, but it's up to you. Okay, Wait, yeah, he's yeah. not He's not in the, he's not like a top 20 guy for me. You know what I mean? Okay, so, uh, where do I start? Um, <laughs> Barkley, so, as far as, as far as Hall of Fame goes, and, and when I've looked it up anyways, so there's only 178 players in the Hall of Fame, and there's been like, I don't know, uh, over 4,000. I was just looking this up the other day. Yeah, over yeah. 4,000 players ever. In the history, yeah. In the players ever. Mm -hmm. And I noticed because not all of them are winning MVP, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that's impossible. I think only 30, 35 players have ever won MVP. And then not all of them are, are hitting game winners and stuff like that. But the, the factor that a lot of them had was multiple all NBAs. And I think mm -hmm. that's what you can... That's what you can make a deciding factor when you're trying to figure out who's one of the greatest players ever. If you are capable of being a top 15 player in the NBA for multiple years, that's where your respect is coming from. So from the guys that played in his era, they always respect him because he was one of the best players every single season, which is tough to do, yeah. you know? There's even some guys that get all-stars that have been to the all-star game plenty of times but don't have a lot of all NBAs. Yeah. So I guess it really depends on what you put your weight on. Great I point. definitely, I definitely point, put yeah. weight on all NBAs. Great point. So, I'm going to look it up right now. Yeah, you know what because I'm I don't yeah. like 15 though. Because 13 to me is like, eh, you're pushing it. First team, second team maybe. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. top 10, let's say. Yeah, 15, yeah. 13. You, you know, know what I'm saying? So yeah. um, that's, that's a lot of the reason too why Charles Barkley is... You know, given the credit that he's given. Also, too, him. man, you know, those NBA finals that he went to, man, and, you know, he's getting double-doubles nightly and stuff. Like, Charles Barkley's playing career was, was amazing. And there hasn't been a lot of guys to do what he's done, regardless of however you feel about him, you know? So, um, I think that in this modern day, right, with Instagram and Twitter and that type of stuff, they just continue to put clips up of him making mistakes on TV with, you know, maybe his grammar or whatever. And we forget of how we forget how good of a basketball player this guy That's actually, yeah, actually true. was. Yeah. So for me, someone that, you know, um, I have, I have, uh, I have a big, I don't know what the word to use is. I put a lot of weight on, on, you know, stats and, and, you know, your, your ability to be consistent and the rosters that you played on and, things like that, I, regardless, have a lot of respect for him. So, you know, um, five time all I think time. he's, I think he's, I, I think he's like, you know, top, top, top 50, top 75 mm -hmm. for sure. For sure. That's, yeah. That's oh yeah. I'm, I'll give him top 75 that's, for sure. That's where I'm, but I don't know if that that's where it. I'm putting him for sure. Yeah. I think I'll start with the disrespected side of things as well. And I think Again, to your point around this new era, Instagram, everything is kind of digestible in a different format. And he's not the most eloquent person, let's just call <laughs> yeah, it that, yeah, when exactly, he's on yeah. camera, right? <laughs> and he doesn't, you know, he fumbles on different words and so forth. Yes, and he yeah. just comes across with different, you know, predictions that people are like, oh, Charles said this. So people in the modern era have to look up clips of him on YouTube to really understand his greatness. So yeah. I feel that... The disrespect comes from that because the product that you see of Charles Barkley right now is what you see on TV. Yeah, you don't see the so great, you know, yeah, you don't see the greatness that. of him back in the 80s and the 90s. And when I look at him in the 80s and 90s, he was drafted in 84, if I remember correctly, with Michael Jeffrey Jordan, the greatest player of all time. Yeah, and, thank you. And he played the same era as Michael Jordan. But also I like to compare him in that era with Karl Malone, one of the greatest power forwards as well. That He came in that era and I would say Karl Malone is a better power forward than he was yeah. looking at his overall yeah. stats. So in his own era, he wasn't even the greatest power forward in that era. He went to the finals one time, won the MVP, went to Houston, tried to get that chip with that team right at the end, didn't happen. Yeah, yeah. But he's still, without a doubt, you look at his full body of work, rebounds, I think he still has one of the 
highest rebounding averages of all time, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. We just verified his I can read it off his right all now. stars yeah, read it, yeah, read it. as well. NBA, so, sorry to cut you. No, no, go for it. NBA Most Valuable Player, 11-time yeah. NBA All-Star, uh, NBA Game, NBA All-Star Game MVP, five-time first team All-NBA, five-time second team mm, yeah, yeah, All-NBA yeah. third team in 96, uh, NBA All-Rookie team in 85, NBA Rebounding Leader in 87, um, yeah, look, we yeah. don't need to go on. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Once, yeah. You, have, once yeah. you have that many all NBAs, yeah, you your Hall of Fame ballot yeah. is like you're, you're usually first, second, like for sure. If you have that many all NBAs, in the yeah. words of Jay Z, numbers don't lie. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. the guy is top 50, top 70 of all time, one yeah. of the greatest power forwards, maybe behind Tim Duncan and Carl Malone, maybe third or fourth. I and, and, and then we also, to your point, we also have to look at the fact that he also revolutionized the game. Yeah. He's what, 6'5", 6'4"? Yeah, he's 6'5", and one of the greatest, you could you classify yeah. him as the, the best rebounder per size. Maybe Rodman, you know, Rodman, what was 6'9"? Six 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 yeah, 6'9". Six nine. Nine. Yeah, so, yeah. you could flip a coin, maybe. He's still four inches yeah. shorter than Rodman. Yeah. That's yeah. huge. That's so, huge. disrespected for the reasons I mentioned, but definitely one of the greatest players in the top 50 to 70. That's... You're elite, elite. Yeah, you're yeah. in the top one percent of basketball players of all time. That's so. what I'm saying, man. There's only yeah. four thousand ever. You know. Yeah, <laughs> you're walking the earth. You're one of the greatest players of all time. You live, <laughs> you live pretty good. Yeah, I, I just think, like you said, to your point, I think the only reason why people disrespect him is everything you yeah. just said. They yeah. just do it because how he speaks. Yeah, and he talks in an era where everybody's very sensitive. He just says what's on his mind. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and people don't like that. <laughs> yeah, it's a very sensitive new age. Yeah, anyway, we'll go back to me. Take a little bit of spalding. Let me just stir this around. See Did you get. destroy this just for this? Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. sir. Let's see. 80 <laughs> bars for once. For real. <laughs> yeah. Pick one. Let's one see down. What this is. <laughs> Ooh, this is good. And I'll start with you, Nell, actually, this time, and then we'll kind of move it around. All right. Is LaMelo going to be an all star? An this year or perennial? Just yeah. in general, is LaMelo oh. going to be an all star or a superstar? That's what it's it. So, you know, I so in in my little bit of playing that I've done, I've been on both ends of the spectrum as far as you know being a starter and your leash is a little bit longer, you get to your minutes are solidified, which allows you to make mistakes, you know, and being coming off the bench. I feel like they don't give, sometimes anyways, I mean, it's kind of changing as minutes are going up, but I feel like sometimes they don't give him enough time to make mistakes. Him being so young and so talented, like this is a guy, like you gotta just let him, let him, let him off the leash. Oh, how old is he? 19. 19? 19, 19 right. Yeah, yeah. This, this, is, your this is a guy yeah. you just gotta let him off the leash and let him play. So, I think that he will be an all-star if he gets the minutes that he deserves. Mm -hmm. If he doesn't, then it's gonna be, then it's gonna be tough for him, so. I don't think it's in his hands, and I don't think that his game, his game is, is um, I don't think his game is gonna change as far as, as far as what he's capable of doing. I think he's capable of being an all star, mm -hmm. but his minutes have to match that to make it happen. Right. An interesting fact about this, I think, as well, Lamelo Ball just beat uh, his brothers. A, uh, record for the youngest triple double, triple double of all time, yeah. and I think at that time we would have said that you know Lonzo would go on to be an all star, and look, he's you know on the trading block right now, and he's he's improving, but he's not an all star. I kind of see him potentially going that path as well. It all depends on his minutes, depends on what happens in Charlotte as well. It's also situational, and if you're winning, to our point that we we're talking about earlier, if you're, you're in a winning environment. You're going to be up higher to that point. You know, Kobe was what 46 or something in that right, one year. Yeah, right. We're talking about one of the greatest players of all time. Rest in peace to Kobe. That's it. If if he's in Charlotte and they're winning, he's going to be an, an All Star a couple of times. If Charlotte continues to be Charlotte Bobcats, uh, then he may not become. <laughs> the Bobcats. <laughs> yeah. He may not have reached it. <laughs> yeah. he, he may not be an All Star. He may just be a good player on the Bobcats. Would be my. Take on that. Your take. Um, you know, I think it's too early to tell, to be honest with you. Uh, it's tough to tell because of what Nell said. He's coming off the bench. His production off the bench is good, um, but it's hard to tell if it's all-star level right now. He hit the triple-double. Uh, he dropped 27 the other day, 27 in, yeah. you know, eight or nine or something like that. He, he's playing well. He's playing well, but um, 
we just got to see how his game really translates over time once he becomes a starter, once scouting reports get done on him and stuff like that. Because part of the NBA game is mental. And part of it is like, can you handle 82 games a year? Can you... We know you can play basketball, but now will you be a good NBA player? So I think we need a bit more time to see. We see he has the intangibles. He's, he's in my opinion, right now better than his brother was when his brother came in. I think he's more impactful to his team. Uh, he's just handling the limelight a bit better. Um, but my prediction, roughly, I think he'll be an all-star. He'll be in all-star games. He can drop dimes. He's flashy. Like, he, he'll be an all-star. Mm. Will he be an all-star? Like, stand the test of time, be a good NBA player at a high level for years to come? I don't know yet. In my opinion, first of all, let me just put this up with the camera. This is Nick, Nick Young, is what he said. Nick Young, Nick Young. First of all, says, Nick Young is whack. And, and I said, we'll take that with a grain of salt. Swaggy P. Swaggy P. Said, P said, he says, this is M this is Lamelo's league now. That's what he said. <laughs> well, don't put it on so, Nick Young quotes, man. So I had to put that out there. So any, anyway, any, anyway, anyway. Yeah. Like, oh I had to put God, that. Yeah. Yeah. I had to put that Next out there. Question, okay. I, Next question. Next question. I had to put that out there only because. Swaggy P. Every. Oh Where's he right now, by the way? Where's he? Oh my. I, I forgot he's one of the seven disciples of the NBA. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Everything. Yeah. Nobody even knew when he left the league. Oh my anyway, he? anyway, my point. Is he my hanging point. out with Gilbert Arenas in a club right my, now? My, my, my point to posting that was, I think, when we when we dive into what is a superstar or all star, swaggy. Pick. What are we di- <laughs> What are what are we looking at? Like, and I think you all made good points. I think Lamelo embodies everything of a superstar. I think. In today's league, the way it's going, there's so many guys that are out of the league now that I've been watching videos on, like uh, Michael Beasley, um, OJ Such Mayo, crazy. like tons of these guys that could play in today's game Beasons, because Beasons they're Beasons offensive college. beasts, and that's what the game is about. So it's like when they needed to be defenders, that wasn't their game. So today's game, LaMelo can fit in because he has the flash. He has the passing ability. He has the offensive ability. Even his IQ for the game is crazy. I don't it's know if you guys saw that. That last game where they were, they had the ball in the inbound. It was like one point something left, and he hit the ball off of the uh, yeah, up, uh, um, yeah. Sabonis' so back, yeah. and then he just ran off the court. And everybody was like, "Oh, what is he doing?" But just little things like that is what will take him to me and the next level because we're looking at again. And I always want to break it up to the 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 product in terms of it being a business yeah. and understanding the players. These players are starting to understand this is a business. So yeah, I can play good. I can train. But what am I doing to keep me on this team? If I can keep the fans in the seats and I can drive revenue, then 100%. For us that like the actual game, I think the kid could be good. I think he's going to be a superstar if we keep going the way we're going. Is Zion, is he on the levels of the Zions and the RJ Barrett's and these guys? I don't know, but I think he's flashier than them, to my in my opinion. I don't know what that will equate to later on, but I, I think he could be... A future for the for the league. As, as crazy it is, so I can be said it, but I think he could be. You know, don't call Swaggy. <laughs> you know what I'm gonna <laughs> say. You've been hanging out with Swaggy. You want to find a way or something? Hey, I, would, I, would, I would. I would. Just, I'm just saying. I'm just I saying. That. He's a regular ass dude around here nowadays. <laughs> and with that being said, we're gonna go to a quick commercial break. <laughs> Shout out to type. Shaggy. Shaggy. <laughs> Shaggy. <laughs> 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 It's by the boulevard. Oh, it's loaded with paper. You don't even have to refill it for a while. Yeah, man. It's updated with new, new topics. Oh, man. I don't even want to do this one. I swear. You have to, man. It's, you oh pulled it. You gosh. pulled it. You pulled it. I just think it's such a friggin... You, this is so... Is LeBron the GOAT or is the NBA rules oh. catered to him? <laughs> oh, that's a, that's a loaded question. That's, oh, the question. that's a loaded question. I don't even want to go there. That's a loaded that's question. question. That's so you start is with LeBron who you want to start or you start. That's up to you. We'll start with no. I feel okay. like he has something to say right, all right now. Right. Is How LeBron the GOAT or is the NBA rules catered to him? I'm going to be completely honest. I'm going to go this way too. I'm going to be completely honest. LeBron is LeBron is definitely not the GOAT to me. I'm sorry. Um, and this is a younger guy. Yeah, I mean, younger. Yeah, exactly. I was he's, gonna say. Yeah, he's an amazing player. Obviously, he's he's easily one of the best players ever. Obviously, yeah. Is he the goat? Not to me personally. So I don't know. 
I don't know what that would equate to, you know what I'm saying? Whether how how much my opinion matters or <laughs> it matters <laughs> but, highly at this stage. But I don't I personally don't see LeBron as a GOAT. I have I have a guy, maybe two guys over him. Yeah. I don't know. Two of those two. I <laughs> He's Okay, so yeah. so I was sure you wanted to I was gonna say, yeah, yeah. You, sure you, you could just that? name them. Yeah. So, yeah. You don't have so, to okay, yeah. Okay. 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 So so factually, yeah. factually. Michael Jordan is over him, factually. Yeah, yeah, I'll get to him. Okay. That's a consensus, yeah? <laughs> yeah, I agree, factually, 100%. Factually. Emotionally, I got Kobe over him. Ooh, that's, oh, that's oh, Chris's oh, guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Emotionally, but that, that what was... What does that mean, emotionally? Don't say that. <laughs> yeah. oh, my God, bro. Was like, is Kobe there or not? I think Kobe. Man, I got Kobe there, but for, yeah. like I said, for many reasons that might not always yeah, yeah. be stats and that type of stuff. You know but okay, but let's say so basketball-wise, is Kobe there? Yeah, yeah, I got okay. Kobe there. I agree. I got Kobe there, so... um. Yeah, I feel like there's a second half of that question. Does, 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 yeah, does, um, is the game is the game, game catered, catered to catered LeBron? To him. Yeah. Um. Uh, you know what? No, I'm gonna disagree with that. I don't think the game is catered to him. I think at this point in his career, he's done a great job of putting to get putting together teams that um, you know, adds to his game and makes it makes him elevate. He elevate and his teammates are in a position to also elevate based on the way that he's playing too. So I don't. I don't think there's a rule that you could put in to like help him at this point or you know or he's going it's not like LeBron goes to the line like 14 times or 16 times like even some of these other guys so no I disagree with that I don't think that um I don't think that he's being like babied or anything like that I think that uh he plays amazing and his, his team helps him play too so yeah, yeah. That's, that's what I gotta say the GOAT is always a personal preference, but when we're talking about the GOAT, there, there's really two people, you know, we commonly debate, you know, Mike, Michael Jordan and LeBron. And for me, the GOAT is measured in championships. And LeBron, what are you? Three, four, sorry, four and four seven. Four and ten. Four, four and seven no, four now. Seven. Four and what? seven no, now. No, I think it's four and well, ten. He's been there no, ten he's been to the He's been to the finals okay. 11 times. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, he's oh, been... Wow. Because he went eight times straight or something crazy yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, so yeah. LeBron is an amazing role model. He's a fantastic, as I said earlier, one of the greatest GMs of all time. The man can move <laughs> pieces like anything else. Uh, a lot of Michael Jeffrey Jordan didn't have that opportunity. Kobe Bryant didn't have that as well. LeBron's an amazing player. We'll go down as probably the second or third greatest player. But for me, again, Michael Jordan is the GOAT. Mm -hmm. And as Nell said as well, Kobe is what I mean. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Jelly beans, man. Right, Rest right. Peace. Jelly my beans. man Kobe as well. Yeah. Second part of that, does it cater to him? Again, he's the greatest GM of all time. So there's but the game overall, he's just he's the he's the the figure of the NBA. He's such an amazing role model. The NBA supports him, but I don't think they, they cater to his needs. So no, I don't think it's there's any foul play in involved or anything that you could say that's really pushing the game one way to LeBron but Michael Jordan is the greatest of all time <laughs> all right, man, all right. I'll, I'll let you finish Landon I'll just plug in real quick yeah so I, I, I think no 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 I'll let you finish okay I, I, sorry go ahead go ahead finish. or my fault yeah. um, is LeBron James the GOAT Michael Jeffrey Jordan is the GOAT not LeBron James uh, I think we can all agree on something <laughs> officially. I think, yeah, we I all agree on that. So Michael far, Jeffrey honest. Jordan is the GOAT. Um, so it's not LeBron James. That's quick. I can sh yeah. That's short for me. Um, and does the game cater to him? No. But they, the game has given him too much power. That's what I'll say. He has yeah. more power than the average player, or than, than a, even an elite player like himself should have. Um, you know, if we're talking about the business of basketball, it's tough for me to say that the player should be all up in it and should be the maestro and should be, you know, orchestrating deals and all these type of things. Like Chris said, he's the greatest GM this game has right now. I don't think that should be the case for a player. Um, the league doesn't cater to him, but he has too much power. As a one individual player in a league of 300 plus guys, that would be the only thing for me. And if, if we're gonna talk about how they cater to him, I'm gonna say this. Every time the man's shooting free throws, they always try and distract him. So you don't notice that he's shit. They always, they <laughs> That's always, a good point. No, no, it, it's funny, always, but it's a good point. Listen, it's facts. Uh, now that you now that I said that, pay tell me how that worked in the bubble. <laughs> Yo, it was a glaring whenever LeBron is at the free throw line, they always bring up 
stats about yep. something. They're always going to talk about something. That's or they'll true. put the camera somewhere else. <laughs> oh, they supposed to drink in the stands. Or, or what? Like, I'm telling you, they really try their best. I don't know if this is a request from Team LeBron. <laughs> What's his manager's name again? Rich Paul. Rich, Rich Paul. Paul. I don't yeah, know if yeah. Rich Paul's pulling strings up there, but when he's shooting free throws, the attention, you better believe, is on something else. It's true. One thing I find, too, before I flip it to you as well, when I think about <clears throat> LeBron, the GM, the one thing I think about in NBA history to Kobe as well, when Chris Paul was traded to the Lakers, and they vetoed, they vetoed that it. Trail. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 2000 and what was that, 13 maybe? No, maybe yeah, even yeah, earlier. Yeah. They vetoed that trade. An upset. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's a good point. I'm glad you put it in that context because he was he was traded. He was traded. He was there. He was ha done. Yeah. Al Gasol, Deal was Lamar, done. Yeah. Lamar, uh, Odom, the, the shell of Lamar Odom, and they vetoed that trade. Yeah. That would have been crazy. That would have been Chris Paul and Kobe. Kobe would have won another. Like, who, who knows how Chris many? Chris Paul would have got his first. He got it. It's just, yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. Poor Chris Paul. Um, I just want to show this on the camera again. Okay. Another, uh, uh, is don't. This is another, this is another listen, swaggy You lost right. your credibility yeah, to do that. Another, another, another quick one. You're you guys, you guys, you guys are like Who's this? this? It's LeBron. LeBron said, I've won two of the hardest championships in NBA Stop history. It. So, Stop it. So the, the reason why I posted bubble, that. Was the bubble one of them? Yeah, that's what he said. The reason, the reason why I posted that is because. Come on. I'm not even going to talk about the GOAT because it's Michael Jordan. It doesn't, I don't even <laughs> get into those debates with people. But in regards to how does he dictate the way the NBA goes, I'm going to get really deep with it because I believe the product, again, and I'm always going to use the word product, is a business standpoint. So from a business standpoint, we've got to get people in the seats. LeBron dictates the way that goes and his team with Rich Paul, et cetera, et cetera. He puts narratives out there to create the conversation more around whatever he's doing at his team. The people that are part of LeBron's team always become topic in any sort of conversation. We're talking about him now. Every conversation becomes a LeBron-based conversation based off of the way his team kind of sets things up. And I think the NBA understands that. And LeBron said this a while back. And fact check me, anybody, go back and fact check and Google the, the, the interview where Shaq said he was shocked when LeBron said, I am the NBA. He wasn't wrong, though. He is the NBA. You can't go back and go, oh, you know, LeBron is crazy for saying that. Everything LeBron does is about bringing more revenue to the product. So the NBA knows if LeBron, and I've never seen, I don't know if you guys have seen it, I've never seen LeBron commit a foul and just walk and put his hand up and say, it was me. He always goes to the ref. It can be challenged, and he's going to win it probably 95% of the time. They, they understand you cannot go against what the, 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 the I don't want to, I don't even know what to call him. He is the the, the, the catalyst the yes. for making money for the NBA. And he understands that. He turned around and said in another, and again, fact check me, he turned around in another uh, interview and said, I have to mentor younger players and I have to leave the league in a good place. Kobe gave it to me, Jordan, whoever gave it to me. So I have to do the same thing. So he understands in his mind that my, my presence in this league is going to make this product better for the future. So in that being said, I do believe, and you guys said maybe you don't, I do believe he suggests a lot of things that happen in the league, in my opinion. I, I just don't think how you can't see it from a business standpoint. You would be blind to not look at the way the league is going. And again, we already agreed, we are the minority on consumers of the game. We are actual lovers of the defensive, offensive, the structure of the offense, the way things go. The average fan doesn't give a shit about any of that. They care about how many like how many threes did Stephen Curry hit? He hit ten. That's amazing. That's what they want to see, right? How many threes did Jordan hit? I mean, Jordan. Sorry, LeBron. They don't care about the other A's and B's and C's of the game. So I, that's just my two cents on it. I'm not gonna lie. I disagree with you, man. I disagree with you. And the reason why I say that is because he's lost too much. I feel like if if that was the case, they would be trying to, you know, do things or put him in a position to win. Like, he's, he's in the finals, though. They always do. But he's, but he's, he's always, always in the finals. In position to win, right? that's, that's all I'm saying. He's always in the position to win. I think even with the shitty know, teams, man. he's but in he, the But he's lost, he's lost quite a bit, man. Like, that's because he's not what they are... I'm saying it. They're, he's not what they're <laughs> so listen, saying he is. That's all I'm saying. The you NBA know? can only step in so much. So when we talk about how much he's lost, believe it or not, the NBA really did try... To, to, to help that machine to get LeBron where he needed to get. But the reality was, inevitably, his team was just too shit. And there's 
<laughs> like, so what happens is there's, there's circumstance and there's happenstance. They try to set up the circumstance, but sometimes the happenstance is so much more, um, like it happens to be greater than the circumstance that you just have to let it play out. So they might try and set up certain scenarios for the, for the outcome to be what they want, but if what really happens kind of outweighs that, then they just have to go with what's happening. And I think a lot of the time when he took L's, they were trying to get him to that glory. They were trying to get him there, but things just kept happening to prevent it. And we see that narrative all throughout NBA. Here, here's a question. So to what you're saying, um, the game where he stepped over Draymond's head, right? Uh, and Draymond punches him in the nuts. Obviously, that's a bad decision on Draymond, but that was Draymond's second uh, flagrant or whatever, technical, yeah, he whatever. Missed the next game. And he missed the next game. Are you trying to tell me the league wasn't like that's perfect for that to happen? And LeBron, he they said he got a technical, but what repercussions happened to him? That's my that, point. That, those are little things that they, I look at, you so know? So happens, with that example, happenstance happened, and now they can use that to, to, to do what they need to do with the circumstances. You know should have won that. I, I, I still, to this day, 100% think Warriors should have won. If Why? Draymond they plays, they win. No, hey, what happened, happened. Like, yeah, no, but it's I don't right. know, man. I don't, I don't think... What? That's a 73 and 9 I, I think Draymond, if plays, I think they don't lose those series. I, know, I, I don't think... But so. once again, back to my point, because it was the 73 and 9 season, it was the best opportunity to give LeBron a championship in the midst of that great team. That's true. LeBron down 3-1. Okay, guys, this is what's going on right now. Let's see how we can make this work. That's true. That's, how, that's the discussion at the round table. The NBA and then LeBron. Brian seat at the head of it. That's the discussion, yo. But sorry, what were you? I know, I know you don't agree with it. I know, no, you know I, I can see it. I don't. Yeah. I don't agree with it, man. I'm not gonna There's lie. There's only so much a player could do. That's that's literally what I'm about to say. Like, even if they were trying to, like, you know, something like that was going on, like, he's still losing here. Like, you're not losing like a lot, but I mean, he's losing, you know, a lot of big games, a lot of big championships, things like things of that nature. So, is that is that because so. is that because he's not what they're painting him to be? That's what I keep trying to understand. If to me, I think, and maybe I'm far fetched, if we put a, a Kobe or a Jordan, the guys we were talking that are ranked above him in those scenarios. What do you think the outcome is? In my opinion, in your opinion, what do you think? Well, we just know they're gonna shoot it. I mean, I, I, I'm not gonna say that that you know they're gonna win 100% for sure, but we know in those scenarios, like if it's a close game, like they're going to shoot it. Everybody knows they're gonna shoot it. So I don't know, I don't know if that's what would make or break his championship record. I, I can't say that because I mean that's his style of game. But we know if it was other guys in those positions, they're shooting it a few more times in those clutch moments. And, those and, and I think to be yeah, honest, probably shooting it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I think it's, yeah, yeah. and I think in today's generation we we're we're outdated now, so it doesn't really like people aren't gonna the younger generation isn't gonna equate what we're talking about to what they see today. So it's like we could talk about Jordan, Kobe, etc. They don't know because they haven't really watched. And if they don't go back and watch the clips, and nowadays footage is everything. If you don't have that, it didn't exist. It didn't happen. So it's like you're just talking <laughs> exactly right. So they have to go back and really analyze and, and really look at that. But again, if you go back and look at the old product, we're watching San Antonio Spurs games that are only scoring 70 points. <laughs> you don't want to watch that. Nobody wants to watch a full game of San Antonio playing like Houston and it's a 70 point game. Like nobody wants to see it. But defense is being played. It's, yeah. it's just different, you know? You know what I will say if we're going to close up this point? Yeah. Now that he's close to reaching Kareem, I do feel that certain things are kind of happening right now to kind of make that happen or to he's, he's gonna get there he's gonna get he's there gonna no get no there. doubt about it but i just saw a, a stat today his, his his everything is up in his season 18 minutes per, like everything is up you know and and the way that he's playing the game the way the team is playing around him i feel if there's any catering being done even, you know not no big deal or anything but they want him to catch kareem before the end of his oh, career 100%. the nba as an entity wants him to get that number one tag so I think they're gonna do whatever they can. We don't know how limited that is. They're gonna do whatever they can to help that. I think. I'm gonna be honest though. Like, there's nothing you can do about it either, though. Yeah. Um, no, I think there's a lot. Sure. There's strings that they could pull. No, like, but I'm they... saying, like, if LeBron wants to do it, there's nothing anyone can, can stop him from doing it. Though. Well, unless, 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 gets, unless there is gets, someone who can unless stop he gets, him from doing unless it. Unless he gets hurt, but there's no, nothing. Yeah, unless no one he can gets stop hurt him from or, doing it. Well, the reality is, he just might, if he doesn't do it, if he retires before he does it. That, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. There's a guy that can have a passing seven-footer in Brooklyn. 
Oh, I agree with that. No, it's gonna you know, happen. I agree with that. You know what's maybe. tough with him though is he's, he's, he's had a lot of major injuries. Yeah, that's so the thing. Yeah, he he's, can, he's had a couple seasons where he only played a few games and yeah. stuff. So anyway, I think we're he's gonna put up. He's gonna, but KD can put up more points at a faster clip. It don't take as long. We can talk yeah. about. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we can go forever. We're at the yeah. 15 minute mark. Yeah. Who's Nell? Nell, you're next on it. Yeah, yeah, Nell, yeah, yeah. I think it's, it's gonna get to a point where we're gonna have no choice but to call LeBron the goal. But him getting there and the things he's gonna have to do to get it might take away from that. Like he's played 18. Jordan only played 13 years. Uh, no. yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? How how good is Darren Fox? For me, oh, I'm not supposed to answer first. Whoever you want, you, you say yeah, you go first. And to we'll, to be honest, we'll I haven't because it's the Kings. I haven't watched enough of their their games. I haven't seen enough sample size to really see enough to to give you a fair assessment. I've watched a few games recently, and from what I've seen, I can think he's. He's incredibly quick off the ball. He's a great point guard, but in that system, I just constantly find him with Sacramento. Their defense is woeful. The team is woeful. It's always going to be the perennial all stars, the people that you know are, that are around the league and you know making those all first, second team, third team all stars are usually typically on winning teams unless you're generational players like the people we've spoken about. So for me, it's. It's too early. It's very too early to tell for me, but I think he has the potential of maybe being once or twice an All Star. But unless Sacramento improves really quickly, or he moves into a better environment, or is traded to a different winning team, it's going to be very, very tough in Sacramento. So we're going to go this way. Yeah. Okay. So um, my opinion, um, I've watched uh, quite a bit of his games this season. This season, I think he's just kind of coming into his own. I saw actually a little um, debate where they said he's what. Like he is what John ja Morant should be, kind of thing. Like, yeah. so basically, they're kind of comparing the two. So John ja Morant is like light years ahead of him in terms of his play versus what De'Aaron should be. De'Aaron is just starting to come into it, and I think, to your point, I've watched enough games now where I see like it's still a bit of we're trying to give him the ball feature and let him run the offense. Is he a great point guard? I don't know. Well, I have to go look at the statistics in terms of his assist ratio. But I think offensively is incredible. Yeah, I think quick. Lonzo and him and Lonzo are in the same class. Lonzo's nowhere near him. Like what I thought Lonzo was gonna be versus what he is, he's starting to show now he could be playing with the all stars, the superstars of the league. Mm -hmm. I think he's on a bad team. And anytime you're on a bad team, it's tough. I played on a bad team my whole fucking career. <laughs> and I swear I get, but I, I I did. So it's like I understand what he's what he's going through. It's like you can look really good and people will come back and go, well, are you really that good or are you just yeah. on a bad team? But it's just like, I think he's slowly starting to realize like, okay, every night I'm the man with the ball. I can now orchestrate offenses. And I and I think he will eventually became, become a future of the NBA, in, in my opinion. Um, so because he's on my fantasy squad and he's uh, actually one of, my keepers yeah, that's from, good, yeah. he's yeah. one of my keepers from last year, I do have a, uh, you know, I have the radar on him. I've been watching him. Um, I think he's amazing. Uh, he's authentic, like all around. Game. Amazing? That's the word you're gonna use. Yeah, I think okay. Amazing. Okay. Okay. I, I wrote on this paper. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Read the name. Yeah, John Wall. John Wall. Yeah, he's yeah, a yeah. better version of John Wall. Yeah. When I think of him, I think of Wall. That was when he's he was a better yeah, version of John Wall, yeah. and that's a lot to say, seeing that he came in the league after and he's younger. Right. But yeah. he's what John Wall. You wish John Wall looked at. Listen, he's a point guard. He'll dunk on your head. Yeah, it's true. He'll hit the three. Yeah. He'll give you ten assists a game. Drop twenty five points. His defense, I'm not. He's good at he's good at steals, but I don't know in the context that comes. You know, yeah. look once again he's on my fantasy, so I see the numbers. I don't see the games as much. To your point, he's on it. The market there is terrible. I, he, I don't know. We, every, unless they're playing the Raptors. Yeah, yeah. Right. 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 And, right. and they play twice they, a year. Last game they beat the Raptors. Kings games on TV, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. But once again, that's a team full of young talent in which a young player is expected to be the leader. So it's a, it's a tricky situation. The, the young player being him, and it's a tricky situation, but. I think he's off the charts. I think he's gonna. He has a great future in the league. Better John Wall. Remember I said it. Yeah. No, I, I, I'm a big fan to be honest. Big like, fan. I, I like his game a lot, man. He's a, he's very fun to watch, and he's trying to win, man. It's so tough in those situations where you know it. You just you just don't have the firepower to win easily. You know what I'm saying? So they are they're forced for him to produce in order for them to compete. And then there's, if, there, if there's a night, things might start slow for him. Then they just go down 20 or something crazy. Like, But as far as like an individual basketball player, I think yeah. he's really, really good, man. And I think he has...
potential to continue to get better. Like he's not a he, he's a scorer. He's not a shooter. If he continues to shoot the ball, then the driving is gonna open up even more and, and things along those lines. So, man, like he, he's really good. He's really good. I'm a big fan, to be completely honest. So, yeah, yeah I, yeah. I think like you said, like maybe we have to we have to and you know we can continue to talk about it. But I think uh, as time goes on, I think we just have to look at the fact of what he's put out so far this season, and I think he. He's at that trajectory where he can get a lot better. Like I think he he's slowly starting to get comfortable with, like Darnell was saying, with like offenses and et cetera, et cetera. Like he 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 will be a player I think for the future to look out for. Mm -hmm. What is he? Twenty three. Yeah, super yeah, young. Yeah, he's yeah. super young. So there's no, plenty. I don't even... Yeah, he may be twenty two. Under twenty five. Yeah, under twenty five. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. Under twenty five for sure. Yeah. Young dude, man. Yeah, I really think you raised a good point. I think he's a young John Wall and has the potential to be even better than John. Wall. Even better, yeah. Right. Anyway, next, Tristan. Thank you, right? Tristan. That's me. Oh, Tristan. All right. It's falling basketball. Bringing out the gems. <laughs> Real time. NBA switching to Wilson soon. Oh, same question about right. LeBron. We could talk about that again. No, 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 no. Oh, yeah. I, that was my bad. I tried to get back in there. I tried to fish it up. All right, let's talk about that again. No, 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 no. I'm good. I'm tired of talking about it. This, this, this time with energy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm so over LeBron. Don't put no more LeBron jokes in there, man. Oh, good question. Who is the final person to take the shot on Brooklyn? Ooh. You, you, whoever you want to start off. Oh, uh, man. <laughs> You go first. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll start it. I, I think, in my opinion, and I want you guys to hear me out, I, uh, I I read a couple articles first, and then I actually watched the games, and everybody, first of all, said Chris Broussard. Shout out to Chris Broussard. Mm -hmm. He said Kyrie should be the only one to take the ball and handle the ball during clutch moments. At first, I thought he was a little crazy for saying that. that. But... After watching the games, talking to Swaggy P, I hundred percent, I hundred percent agree with him. I think Chris, I think Kyrie is the neutral person that should handle the ball. And, and hear me out, because KD is a, a quality, intelligent shot taker. He doesn't take very many bad shots. If you notice his game, he is very efficient. James Harden now becomes the facilitator. So I don't think James Harden wants to be the guy to handle the ball during those positions. I think Kyrie is fearless enough because he has that Kobe Mamba mentality. Yeah, he doesn't care. He would be okay taking those shots and you blame it on him. And I think in terms of what he does offensively, and now we're seeing the way it's kind of molding, James Harden could be more of a facilitator. KD, you're going to get him, and but the obvious person to give the ball to is KD. So now it's like... Kyrie's your third option. We're not going to give it to Kyrie, but Kyrie could always bring the ball down and make the decision to either attack, kick, not necessarily would he do it, but James Harden could bring the ball down and say, okay, we're going to devise an offense, give the ball to Kyrie. Kyrie, you spot up, you make that final shot. I think in every position, the ball should be in James Harden to dribble the ball, but I think Kyrie on the wing or wherever you want to kind of position him should have the ball to, in those last closing moments to either decide to shoot it or pass it up, in my opinion. Um, I don't want to seem like I don't know basketball, right? That's, <laughs> I'm going to share basketball, right? Right? That's a weird way to start. But what I'm going to say, my answer is, I think it doesn't matter. I think it's a, it's a, it's, it's a more, it's more about whatever play is drawn up, how the play breaks down. But it has to be in one of their hands. If ever it's, it's a last play and it ends up in. Uh, Joe it's like no, that should have never happened. <laughs> However, if any of those three take the shot, you're not gonna be Jeff like, yo, Green. what the hell was that? True. Jeff Green. Yeah. You're never Uncle gonna Jeff. be mad if any three of them take the shot. Alive. Now, on the flip side of that question, the one who I think should take the shot the least is James Harden. I think it should always be between Kyrie or Durant. That's good. That's interesting. That's uh, good, yeah. Me personally, like it, it's got to be KD every single time. Wow. I think if the game is close, you give KD the ball, you guys move out the way, and you live with, and you live with the result of that. To be completely honest, if if he's getting to anywhere within 17 feet and inside, like we're talking about, like. 50% shooting, man. Oh, um, minimum. Yeah, That's so for me personally, if I'm a coach, you know, no disrespect to Kyrie, no disrespect to Harden. Kyrie might take more attempts for the game, too. When I've been looking, he usually has the most attempts. Yeah, which is weird. But if the game is close, championship on the line, 
or, or whatever the case may be, tough game, playoffs, whatever. I, man, man. Okay. if I'm the coach, I'm giving it to KD every single But time. I'm saying, with that said, why not Kyrie? Like, is there something that KD can do in that moment Kyrie cannot do? I just think KD shoots a little bit higher yeah. on percentage. Okay. okay. That's, that's how I would make my decision. Yeah, yeah. true. I'm gonna, as we all know, basketball is a game of matchups, right? We understand, depending on who they're playing, it may make more sense for that's Kyrie true. to be shooting the ball, or James Harden, and that's the beauty ball, of it. or KD. So I don't have a problem with any three of them taking the final shot, but if I'm putting my championship shot on the line, I'm passing it to Kevin Durant. The man is seven <laughs> foot two. Yeah. No one's blocking, someone may block James Harden's shot, someone may block Kyrie's shot, but Tell me the last time you've seen anyone block no, KD no, shot. No, Bad. Cool of That's, true. Bad. That's true. And the second part of KD is, again, anywhere to your point as well, I'm going to back you up on that as well. Anything within 17 foot, the man is shooting at a 50% clip. The man is shooting at three point range around 40%. You're giving it to KD. Yeah. Put championship on the line, it's KD. Here, here's a question though, I'm challenging both of you on this because you guys said that. Do you think that KD in terms of basketball, um, dribbling, handling the ball, can get to the same spots that Kyrie can to take that shot. That's the question I would ask you. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yes. You think so? He can get anywhere he wants. He doesn't handle so in the rock. Thing. The why same not way Kyrie? Kyrie. I think Kyrie right. and KD this could is, do the same. That's why I said either one like, of they those. They do the two. same this thing. This is a guy that his teammates are just lucky. Like he's a nice guy. Yeah. If if he wanted to be a guy that says give me the ball every single time, no one's touching it for the rest of the game. You can't even tell him that he's wrong for thinking for that. Sure. For so, sure. man, like. For no. me, it's not even a question. It's not even a question for me as well. This, he should be shooting 30 shots a game. Gonna, <laughs> I don't even disagree. I'm being, I'm being I don't honest. even disagree. But I just feel like if what? either of them take it, I'm Sorry, good. go ahead, Chris. What do you think? How many times did uh, Durant lead the league in scoring? Five, six know. years, yeah, something, something like, like that. Really? Yeah. 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 James? Five, yeah, five or six. So yeah. I think he has more champ scoring championships than James, than James Harden. Yeah. yeah. So... But I think to your point, the man could, if the man was shooting 40 shots per game, the guy would average 40. He's become, Definitely. as he's become older, he's become, you know, more, more, more selfless. Yeah, yeah, more yeah. selfless. Yeah. He's one of the greatest pure scorers of Ever. all time. Ever. Without a doubt. I yeah. think when we're all said and done, health willing, he'll beat Kareem and LeBron's scoring Kareem, record. Yeah. Either one, whoever has them interchangeable, but you got to give it to KD. The greatest scorer of all time, most likely. Yeah. With and with that being said, we will. Close it right there. We want to thank you again for tuning in. Today was your first episode of Ball of a Ball. Gentlemen, you have any final closing moments? Lots more to be discussed. Yeah, lots more. Lots more. Yeah, lots yeah, more. Yeah, man. Michael always... Jordan is the goat. Let's just leave that. <laughs> we can talk about the LeBron thing, the Swaggy P. We can bring that back in as well. We've got a lot more to talk about. Everything so I said tuned. is right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Everything I Even said. Even the young guys talking yeah, about Yeah, exactly. Michael exactly. Jordan. You know, <laughs> look out for more fun, yeah, more yeah. knowledge. It's getting warmed up. You know what I mean? We're just getting warmed up. That's it. It's yeah. just the start, baby. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, hey yo, wall to wall ball, ball above all, when the altar call calls, it's Riffic now, Mark Chef, unsolid by a single sponsorship, not yet, outside the box, the next Ernie Shaq, Charles Jet, every stack cross check, every last prospect, tear up in a spalding and reach for next time. We the underdog, but we bopping like the tropics. Here we settle calls and welcome controversy. It's ball of